just want to say how wonderful it is to be here. I'm a great believer in these tribunals because it's, it's only the power of the people that make social change. And for me, these tribunals are the real justice and the justice of the people. My name is Andre Loy. I'm a farmer, an organic farmer of more than 40 years. I'm the president of iFoam International. I'm also the, the author of a book called The Myths of Safe Pesticides and a co-author of a peer-reviewed paper called Genetically Engineered Crops, Glyphosate and the Deterioration of Health in the United States. And we looked at 22 diseases in the United States and the increase of these diseases along with the increase of the use of glyphosate in genetically engineered crops and we found a correlation. So what I want to do... Can you, oh, I can, oh, thank you. What I want to do now is follow on for what Van Dana and Ronnie have said, because Ronnie has said GMO foods are poisonous and the industry says there's no evidence that they're poisonous. It's actually the other way around. When we've looked at the science, there's actually no, they actually have no evidence. They put these products on the market without any safety testing with this very dubious concept called substantial equivalence. The, there's only one lifetime study done by some wonderful scientists here in France, Professor Seralini and his colleagues, and what they found was that the animals all had serious diseases. I'm not going to go into, I don't have the time to go into detail, a picture tells a thousand, you know, stories, a thousand words. And this is an example. Nearly all the female animals had mammary tumours. The only one that didn't have a mammary tumour died of ovarian cancer. The, so if you have a look here, whether they ate GMOs or whether it's GMO or Roundup or just Roundup, they had tumours. He, of course, got a lot of uh, attacked over this. The, however, the World Health Organization this year has come out to say that Roundup is a probable human carcinogen. What that means, it's uh, the category 2A is the second highest category. The way they do that, that means in animal studies, it is definitely carcinogenic. We just need more studies in humans before we say that just because it causes cancer in animals, it causes cancer in humans. The reality is we know very well if it causes cancer in animals, it, we, 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 I know a lot of scientists won't believe this, but we are actually animals as well. It'll cause cancers in us. Um, this is the study that uh, I did along with Professor Nancy Swanson and others. Um, you know, once again, I'm mindful of time, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but we got the statistics from the United States uh, Centre of um, Diseases uh, for a whole range of diseases, and we found 22 of them where there was this massive increase. We then got the studies from the USDA, the figures on the rise in GMO crops and the rise of glyphosate. They track each other because most GMO crops are Roundup ready. They use glyphosate. So you see about... And in this, you'll, you'll see the yellow bar of the diseases, and suddenly around 1995, 1996, these diseases shoot up, along with the, the red and the blue line. The blue line are GMOs, the red line is glyphosate. We did, uh, there's figures up there, I won't go into it, it's called a Pearson's Correlation Coefficient. It's a standard statistical correlation that you use to see if they are, the probability that they are related. Because people will say, you know, co correlation is not causation. But you can look at the closeness or probability. In every one of these, the probability that they are not related, in other words, the probability they are not related, is 1 in 10,000. So they mightn't be, but it's highly yeah. unlikely. The green line is the trend line of what would have been if we didn't have GMOs. And people say, oh, there's no evidence. So... I want to take you through some of the peer-reviewed scientific studies. This is one done on pigs. And you have a look at the stomachs there. There's differences. Now, without going into details, the, the GMO group have 
inflammation of the stomach. Now, inflammation is regarded as one of the hallmarks of cancer. This is a sign of, of um, cancer, the development of cancer. This is the only study we know on pigs. It's very important because pigs and humans have the closest related digestive systems. If this is happening in pigs, it's happening in us and explains this incredible rise of colon cancer. The, they say no one's ever died of GMOs. Well, here we know for a fact that when um, they modified bacteria to make L-tryptophan, which is an amino acid we have in milk, but you can't patent it if, it's, if you get out of milk, but you can patent it if you modify a um, bacteria, patent the process to make this L-tryptophan, which people were using as... L-tryptophan was used before we had Prozac, and it's a very natural way to help people calm people down, help them go to sleep. And people are buying it as a dietary supplement. It's no good for the pharmaceutical industry because we can just get it out of milk. So genetically engineer it. The big trouble, they did it, and 100 people died and thousands got sick. The company got fined over it. And yet the GMO industry says, oh, no, no, there's no evidence that anyone's ever died from GMOs. I want to show you other studies. This is the intestinal wall again. You can see the GM, see how the, the, uh, the villi of the intestines have grown up. That growth is what we call precancerous. It will lead to cancer. The same thing again. We, we can also look at things like livers and changes in the liver. Now, why is this important? Because our liver is our main detoxification organ. We damage the liver, we damage every other part of our body. I just want to show you this one too. This is rat testicles. And you can see the difference with, you know, in what's happening here. What we're seeing now is an incredible decline in fertility and an increase in birth defects. What do you think happens? You know, males make sperm every day. When you damage that basic process, what are we doing to our next generation? So let's have a look at the peer-reviewed science, at the GM and the controls, and you look at the mortality in rat feeding studies of the young. Look at the difference. And so I want to end on this, because for me as a farmer, this says everything. This is BT Brindle in Bangladesh. Cornell University got, gave the Prime Minister of... Um, Bangladesh an award because they're going to save the world by having BT brinjal, that's eggplant. It's one of the, the fundamental foods of South Asia. This is the centre of biodiversity for it. It's not only contaminating, but like the BT corn, uh, the, beet, sorry, the BT cotton that Vandana showed, this is an abject failure in sending these farmers into complete poverty and suicide and destroying their lives. This is a technology that we know is dangerous for the health and it's dangerous for the environment. And I want to end on one last reason why it is dangerous. What, that, what they like to say is they insert one gene and they're doing nothing different than we as farmers have been doing for thousands of years. And that is rubbish because it's not one gene. One gene won't work by itself because it's a foreign protein. If you put a foreign protein into any other organism, our immune system destroys it. The way they get around it, they have to use what is called a viral promoter. And it's not just a gene, it is an active section of virus to basically trick the immune system like viruses do. And that promotes this gene. Well, what does that mean? Well, there's another very important thing we're learning now called horizontal or lateral transfer of genetic material in viruses and bacteria. So imagine now every one of these GM plants, there's billions of plants with billions of cells and every one of them is part active virus. When that gets invaded by a, a virus or a bacteria, you can get lateral transfer of DNA. That's how, for instance, we've got all the superbugs in hospitals. They transfer this DNA between them. And what we're very concerned about, and lots of scientists are now, is that we could be breeding these super um, transgenic viruses without knowing what they are. And, and swine flu is an example of that. We know that's caused by lateral transfer of, of viral material. So 
Thank you. So what I want to end on here is that we've let these things out in the environment. We don't know what's happening. And the worst thing about GM, at least pesticides break down, we cannot recall GM. This technology is completely unsafe, should never, ever be let out of, an, out of a laboratory. And the only reason it's out there, it's not to help humanity, it is to make one of the, some of the most evil corporations on this planet rich at the expense of all of us. And I believe that that is one of the biggest crimes against nature there is. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.